who left right before McCaffrey got there. You have James Muirhead, who trained her. Then you have Jennifer Parent, who is now the head of the uh, New Hampshire Bar Association, the president, okay, she worked on ethics panels, as did McCafferty, okay, in discipline, attorney discipline. Let's get it popping like it's New Year's Eve. We're here at KingCast.net. It is uh, September 8th, uh, Thursday, September 8th, 2011. We're going to discuss briefly judicial ethics and the lack thereof relative to Lanja B. McCafferty's quiet recusal in my free press racial litigation, which is case number uh, New Hampshire District 2010, CV 501. Basically, this is simple. As you can see by the uh, chart that I'm going to show you now, Lanja B. McCafferty... Okay, this judge worked underneath Jack Middleton, who founded McLean Graff. You had Kelly Ayotte over there, who left right before McCaffrey got there. You have James Muirhead, who trained her. Then you have Jennifer Parent, who is now the head of the uh, New Hampshire Bar Association, the president. Okay, she worked on ethics panels, as did McCaffrey. Okay, in discipline, attorney discipline. Then you have a bunch of uh, NB. Uh, New Hampshire Bar program faculty attorneys who also work for McLean Graff. All these, all this kind of association went unbeknownst to me, the plaintiff down here. Okay, that's false. It's it's no, well, it's not false because it happened. But what it is is it's false justice. It's it's unethical. We've all been federal litigators. I've tried one, lost, and settled federal and state cases as a, uh, as an assistant attorney general and on my own. And you can't do that. You can't not disclose that. And I'm going to tell you something. What happened was, uh, but wait a minute, there's something I forgot to tell you. Okay, the way it was originally supposed to go down was you had Mary Ten, who's also a buddy of Kelly Ayotte's, which is, you know, I have no problem with that. But Mary Ten was supposed to be the attorney, and that's what uh, Brian Cullen told me. But then he said, oh, well, um, it's a better forum for us in the federal. Well, that's because Mary Ten wasn't as connected to McLean Graff. I filed a motion to recuse under 28 U.S. Code 455. Initially, I filed a motion for disclosure, and that was ignored, okay? Then the court wrote this terse order telling me uh, that my motion was entirely without merit, okay? Right there. That's what Judge Barbara Doro said. Told me so right there, okay? But then she went ahead and recused herself anyway. But the point is, she should have recused herself in the first place. And some of the indicia of the fact that she was biased in this whole thing uh, would include the fact that she shielded Kelly Ayotte. When Kelly Ayotte was the AG, she came after me as NAACP legal chair with a bogus case, um, the civil and criminal cases that were dismissed. Okay, I mopped the floor up with her because all I had done was threaten to sue, have the NAACP sue, uh, police chief Martin Dunn, after his men had made uh, a black man uh, subject to a strip search and had three guns in his face for loitering, okay? And they came after me with everything they had, all right? And so after I kicked their ass years ago, now we come to court now, and the way that McCaffrey shields it when I'm talking about why Ayotte is locking me out of her political events when other journalists are allowed, what McCaffrey says was, oh, they had an acrimonious past, well, you're goddamn right it was acrimonious, Your Honor, and it dealt with acrimony in race and in the First Amendment, okay? And then furthermore, folks, when she recused herself, look how she did it. She did it, unlike here, where she has her orders and entries that the court, is, that's how you're supposed to do it when you're on the ups. She didn't do it like that, all right? She did it the dirty way. She went and she recused herself in such a way that you know you, you really couldn't find out about it unless you were looking deep in the case files and you were filing something, okay? That's the way she did it. And that's just unacceptable. So at any rate, um, you know, uh, we're going to proceed here and and see what happens. Uh, we have to, you know, go the course because uh, this just isn't right. And, uh, you know, it just destroys all the faith uh, that anybody, that any ordinary citizen could put in the justice system in New Hampshire you know, has been destroyed because of the way she acts. And then furthermore, uh, to make matters worse, so here, here's where it is, where you can see she recused herself right there, okay? 
That's the only way I knew when I filed that, all right? Now then, returning to the matter at hand, I'll tell you, you got a guy, um, Brian Cullen, okay? Now, Brian Cullen is the attorney uh, for the, the city or of Nashua. There he is. He's accusing me now uh, of filing a frivolous action and trying to get her to try to get the court to set aside her report and recommendations. Well, he says, well, you were in contempt of court in Ohio and blah, blah, blah. And I, well, that was from conduct back in the 90s when I was a vigorous civil rights litigator there. But here's the pot calling the kettle black. This guy was found in contempt of court recently in New Hampshire. Okay, so he's going to file a motion talking about how I've been held in contempt of court. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black counselor. All right, file your motion. And we'll see how it holds up when we get to SCOTUS. <laughs> Thank you.